Good morning morning. and welcome. It is truly good to be able to be together uh, to worship the Lord. I don't have to wear a mask because I'm going to be speaking way back here. But uh, thank you for your your courtesy for one another and so on. And we're taking all the precautions we can. And some really good news is that uh, I haven't at least received any information of anyone in our congregation or extended families that I know of who has been sick. Uh, So God has really brought us through in in a wonderful way, and he will continue to be with us. Uh, Some prayer requests. Uh, One is for Jesse. It's a a young uh, mother who works at Menards uh, who is interested in spiritual things, and uh, we want to pray for her, and also we want to pray for our internet outreach. One of the great things that's happened over the last couple of months is uh, the ministry of the, uh, the congregation has gone way beyond our own congregation. There are many, many people uh, in different avenues uh, uh, listening and uh, receiving the ministry from the church. Uh, so you can go to our website, concordiaoakwood.com, uh, and there will be posted sermons. And uh, also... Uh, I encourage you to subscribe to my own YouTube uh, channel, which all you have to do is type in s- search for Anthony Sobosinski. You'll find I'm posting uh, things there, plus on my Facebook uh, page. And uh, the difference is, is going to be now that we're having live worship services, that uh, this particular worship service is going to be more brief than our normal services. And so will my message. Uh, but I, I, have, uh, I don't have to worry about time at all on the Internet. So on my YouTube channel, it was already scheduled to go on at 8 a.m., and that one's like going to be 40 minutes long just for the message. But I, I use video uh, uh, or, or illustrations, pictures, all kinds of Bible passages. And if you would consider uh, subscribing and con- encouraging people like Jesse to... Uh, come to either our church webpage or, or, or one of mine to, uh, to be able to hear the gospel. Sometimes people just don't feel comfortable going to a new church, let alone a church at all, when it's been a long time since they've been there. Uh, we also have an online Bible study at Thursdays on Thursdays at 9 a.m. At, at this time, instead of our big boy, but you're all invited if you'd like to join us. I do want to say that uh, you need to email me so I can put you on the group, be notified on the WebEx meeting, uh, and I will be starting at exa- uh, opening it up at 8.59, just a minute before it starts, because uh, at the moment we are limited to 50 minutes for that Bible study, which is fine. Uh, we also want to pray for uh, Eric and Ashley, who uh, she had a miscarriage, uh, and I want to encourage you to share your prayer request with the prayer chain uh, or email me uh, so that we can uh, make those part of our worship service. So again, welcome in the name of our Lord and our God, in the name of Jesus Christ, his Son. And uh, I, I ask you now to turn to your bulletin. Our entire service is printed, and we begin uh, with Psalm 8. And I invite you to please stand with me as we worship. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. All sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field. O 
Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Come into his presence with singing. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Give thanks to him, bless his name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your best mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I proclaim the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty, eternal God, in the word of your apostles and prophets, you have proclaimed to us your saving will. Grant us faith to believe your promises that we may receive eternal salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And please be seated. Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse of the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so, and God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning, the second day. God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth. And the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind, on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. 
and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the great light to rule uh, the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the water swarm with swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good and God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the field of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. And our next reading is from Acts chapter 2, continuing from the reading from Pentecost. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all those who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus uh, you delivered uh, up according to the definite plan and knowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced, my flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the path of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, 
and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. And please stand again for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples were, went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Father, we thank you that your son has promised that he would be with us always. Lord, that is such a comfort, and we now turn our eyes upon Jesus, upon you, and ask you to feed us now. Because we know that all of us as human beings, apart from Jesus, we can do nothing of eternal value. But with him, with you, great things happen. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. And please be seated. This morning I'd like to, to uh, focus on 1 Peter chapter 4 and parts of chapter 5. This was the epistle lesson for May 24th. Uh, and there's a lot here that relates to what we're going through right now as individuals, as church community, and even as the world. I didn't know it because a lot of our news is uh, much more American. It's really hard to find out. I guess nothing actually ever happens in the rest of the world, all the rest of the country. So we, but anyway, so I got tired of seeing the same things, and I, I went to World News this morning, and and I found out that the unrest is not only in our cities in the United States, it's in France, it's in England, uh, it's in Korea, it's in Australia. This is something that has spread over the whole world at this point. And in 1 Peter 4, I begin reading to you at verse 12, Peter says to the church, he says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. And uh, maybe in all of our minds, but of, of, I remember as a new Christian, 
I just thought, boy, I know God now. I know Jesus, and he's there to protect me, to be with him. And I thought, uh, when trials did come, difficult times, uh, it did surprise me. It seems strange. But right here in the word of God, uh, we're, we're told, don't be surprised at fiery trials when they come our ways, and don't regard them as something strange. There are going to be things that cause suffering and unrest in our world because of the sinful nature of our fallen world. And there are also going to be things that cause suffering just because you are believers in Jesus Christ. You are the bride of Christ. And simply because you have faith, uh, you are going to experience difficult times. And in verse 13, it goes on to say, but rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings. Rejoicing because we're united with Christ. That you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. We have a future, we have a hope. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory of God rests upon you. And it's going to happen, and it always happened, that are th there are those who would think because you're a Christian that perhaps you are limited in your intelligence, that you're really not a scientific person. You're living in a fairy tale world, and it can even get to the point where they insult you because you believe in him. But Peter says, when that happens, you are blessed because the spirit of glory of God rests upon you. You see, it takes us back to Pentecost. God poured out his Holy Spirit. Uh, last Sunday was the day to rejoice in that message and all the good news that it brings. God intervening, coming into our, our world and into our lives. But here it's saying it's connected with suffering too. The spirit of glory rests upon you when we have a strong enough Christian presence that people know about it, and occasionally we get insulted for it. I'll never forget someone asked the question once uh, a long time ago, said, if you were convicted for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? And verse 15 says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. That kind of suffering is deserved. If we claim to know Jesus Christ and we kill, murder other people, or if we rob, loot other people, we do evil. Uh, Peter's saying this just should not happen because when, when that happens, we deserve the results. In verse 16, he goes on to say, Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And of course, that's always true. God holds us to high standards. It begins at the household of God. When we want to see correction, when we want to see uh, getting better, it, it begins at the house of His chosen people. You are the bride of Christ, the chosen people of God. And he will come into our lives and he will correct. He will convict of our sin. And we welcome that. We want that to happen because that is the way the Holy Spirit convicts us, convicts us of our sins. We confess our sins and then our relationship and its beauty is restored with God. But it begins with the household of God and I'm not going to read the portion that goes after this. But if God is that strict with us, what is going to happen to the rest of the world who have rejected Jesus Christ? It starts with us, but it continues throughout all creation. And only God knows in his righteousness and his will how to carry that out. But be certain and assured that God will bring judgment and correction into us, his bride, and he will bring heavy judgment into the world of those who oppose him and his son. Psalm 2, it starts out by saying, why do the nations 
rage and against God and his chosen uh, anointed one. It's actually, that's one of the words, Messiah right there. They, the, the nations raged. And uh, it really makes you wonder when some people take such a strong stand against Christianity, against Christ, that what asks the question, what's going on behind all of that? But while this is happening in chapter 5 from that reading, it goes on to say, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. So that's what we, we humble ourselves by kneeling at his feet, confessing that we have sinned. We don't just point around at them and they. We, we have sinned, and we have fallen short, and, and we are part. It's amazing. Daniel, one of the most righteous men in the Bible, knelt down and prayed to God, we have sinned. We have sinned. So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, cast all of your anxieties or cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. And that's like emotional therapy for us. We take our concerns, our worries, our cares, our anxieties, we take them to the Lord and we cast them upon him. He takes them for us and they're released from our hearts and we know that he cares and he loves us. Verse 8 goes on to say, be sober-minded and be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, and here he's talking about there is something going on behind the scenes. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him. Firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And part of that faith is the knowledge of knowing these things. So that we're not shocked, we're not disappointed, we're not asking, where is God? Does he hear me? But on the contrary, we know that he would never leave us, that throughout all of the church, we experience sufferings of different kinds, sometimes because we deserve it, and hopefully because we're Christians too. It says, resist him firm in your faith, and faith is knowing the truth, Faith is also having this relationship with Jesus uh, where we can turn our eyes upon Jesus. Beautiful hymn, look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will become strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Verse 10, he says, and after you have suffered a little while, and that's a reminder all trials, all suffering, all difficult times are temporary. Therefore, a little while, in the light of eternity, it's all going to be great. And God will not let you be tempted or tested beyond what you are able to bear. But with the temptation, he'll be able to give you a, a way out from under it. After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. After it has gone by this time of suffering and trials, the God of grace will restore you. He will confirm and make you firm and strengthened in the faith and establish you so that you will not fall. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So please join me in prayer now for the prayers of the church. Father, we love you, we praise you, we worship you, we give you thanksgiving because we know that all things work together for the good, for those of us who love you and are called according to your purpose. We know that all suffering and trials are short-term and that you have this wonderful eternal future for each one of us. We know that you are there to 
test our faith in a way that makes us stronger as we come through, to give us testimonies of your deliverance. And Lord, we do thank you and praise you. You give us more than we deserve. We thank you for protecting us through this pandemic. We thank you and praise you. We thank you that you have brought this day about where we can begin public worship again. And Father, we pray that you would destroy this virus and that you would make us strong. And we pray that you'd open up our country and our church entirely. But Father, we pray that you would continue to help us uh, to use the internet ministry to reach people way beyond our church. People are looking for answers out there. They, they know that we are believers and we can guide them to the word however we do. But Lord, we pray that you would expand our ministry on the internet to people. And Father, we especially pray for Jesse, Lord, that if uh, she's working on Sundays and can't come to church, that Lord, you would guide her and draw her to come and look at her computer when she has time off and to hear the word of God and the gospel of your love. Father, we pray for Eric and Ashley and their loss of their baby and through this mis miscarriage. Lord, bring them healing of their suffering and grief that they're going through right now. Father, we pray for our nation and its leaders. We pray for our president, our governors, leaders throughout that you would give them wisdom, Lord, and, and have your hand upon them to know how to proceed. And we continue to pray also for your leadership in, in your church. And Father, we pray for wisdom and how to proceed in opening up what you would have us to do. Lord, we know there's all kinds of anxiety and fears out there, especially going on. It's spread throughout the world. It makes me think that there's something spiritual like the devil prowling around like a roaring lion that's causing the looting and the rioting. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would bring peace and calm to our world and all to those who are anxious that they can have the same hope we have through the comfort of the Holy Gospel so they can have faith instead of fear. Heavenly Father, we do pray for nobility and uprightness and, and observing the law within our military and our police forces. But Father, we pray for the same thing for our citizens because we know that you have created government in this fallen world. You have created military and police to be your ministers. Lord, forgive us when we do it wrong. But Father, we pray that you would strengthen. Lord, we know that in the last days, the lawless one will be revealed. Lord, help us to be those who gladly obey your laws. Father, we pray for those who are shut in. They've been, uh, we haven't been able to visit them. We pray for Ed and Phyllis, Ruth Cooper, Dave and Arlette Fritz, Mindy Hussman, Ed and Rosemary Mollering, Charlotte Sabatke, Barbara Steffen, Phyllis Stewart, and little Maria. We thank you for preserving her life, and we pray that you would give her a new heart. So Lord, we bring all of our prayer requests and our petitions before you, knowing that you do care for us and all of our concerns and our worries and our anxieties we cast them upon you knowing that you are so able and willing to bear them for us and in turn we receive your peace your love and the assurance of our salvation and the assurance of your protection and presence to be with us we pray this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And I remind you to please remain seated until an usher comes and uh, ushers you out. Thanks for coming. God bless you and protect you, be with you. <laughs>